Now I'm going to bring that snowflake file into the scene. Uh, to do that, I'm going to need a plane. So I'm going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Plane. And you might not see it, but if I click on my Move, I can see that it started in the center of the scene. I'm just going to move that up and bring it over here so I can find it easier. Maybe I'll also rotate it this way so I can see it. There we go. Um, and I can see that it's divided up into 10 and 10 divisions. If I go to my channel box by clicking up on the corner, under the inputs, I can see it says polyplane 3. I can click on that and I can see the subdivision height and width. I'll put those both to 1 and 1. Now I can see that it's a single polygon plane. And what I want to do is I want to add that snowflake onto this plane. And then eventually I'm going to have that assigned to all of the snowflakes. And I'll show how to do that in a second. But to assign a texture to something, I'm going to do this. I'm going to right click, assign a new material, Lambert. And then in the Lambert tab, which would be the, for this tab to the right on the attribute editor, I'm going to go to color. Um, and on this color, I'm going to go here. And when I click on that checker box, you can see that this pops up. And I'm going to go find a file. And then I'm going to click on the yellow folder. And then I'm going to go find a file. So if I have my projects folder set correctly, like we talked about, so if I go to set project, and if I have this set to snowman, set, and now when I click on this, it should automatically find the snowflake because I put it in the source images and that's what it's gonna look for. So if I go to snowflake, I can click open and there it is, okay? Now I don't see it here because the shortcut to see textures in the viewport is six. And if I press six on my keyboard, I can now see the texture. If I press five, that shaded mode, I don't see the texture anymore. It's still there, I just don't see it in the viewport. But if I press six, I see it, okay? Now, um, what's weird about that snowflake is that it doesn't, it looks like obviously there's black around it, okay, because that's how the image was. So you'll notice that if I go click on this, um, I can see that this is the attributes of the material. And if I don't see that, I could right click and go to material attributes and it'll bring me to this section. And I put a color image on color, okay? Now, you'll notice that there's a transparency one as well. And if I bring that slider all the way down, it's fully transparent or fully opaque. Now, I only want parts of the image to be transparent so what I could do is I could put a file on here as well. So if I click on that, and go to file, and then click on the folder, and then find, I'll put the snowflake on again. And with transparency, uh, black, I believe, is going to be invisible, and white will be visible. Okay, good. So now I can see that that snowflake has an invisible kind of background to it, okay? So we successfully added an image to a polygon plane, both a color file and a transparency file. Even though they were the same file, they still have kind of a different purpose for each, okay? So uh, in the next lesson, I'm gonna talk about how to attach that snowflake to the actual snow particles.